Dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin has long been one of the key pieces of advice and most utilized strategies for accumulating BTC. But does DC8 still work or do we need to now look for a better and more profitable method for buying Bitcoin? Today we're going to be looking at whether dollar cost averaging actually works for Bitcoin or if you should consider an alternative. Now, first and foremost, starting here on the dollar cost averaging chart we have here on BitcoinMagazinePro.com. As you can see, dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin over the past five years has been fairly profitable. Using a $10 a day baseline, you'd have invested about $18,260 and that would now be worth about $66,000. So clearly dollar cost averaging works. So why am I making a video potentially saying that dollar cost averaging isn't the best means for accumulating Bitcoin? Well, one thing we try to do here using all of our on-chain data, macroeconomic derivatives, technical charts here on Bitcoin Magazine Pro is trying to help your Bitcoin analysis to more accurately outline periods where accumulating Bitcoin may be more favorable due to the discounted prices, the more favorable risk reward and periods at which taking profit or distributing, selling some Bitcoin may actually make a little bit of sense. But a lot of people who dollar cost average into the market are doing so because they maybe don't actually want to sell their Bitcoin, which is absolutely fair enough. Whatever you want to do with your fiat and Bitcoin, completely up to you. If you want to sell, if you never want to sell, that's fine. One thing we need to consider though is if you are dollar cost averaging, it may be because you have capital constraints. Obviously, we'd have all liked to have lump summed right at the Bitcoin bottom. But if you're like me and potentially have additional capital coming in somewhat frequently that you'd like to reinvest into the market, you need some way of doing so on a more frequent basis while still getting a more favorable risk to reward. So this is where we use some of our on-chain data points to actually try and strategically dollar cost into the market. Now for this video, we'll be focusing on one, the short-term holder MVRV. Of course, you could use other metrics like the standard MVRV Z-score, which is going to give you amazing entries and probably exits as well throughout this cycle and probably future cycles as well. But as I said, we want something that's giving slightly more frequent signals. Now, I'm just going to be focusing on this one. In reality, if you are implementing something like this, take into account multiple pieces of data. What we'd like to see in the Bitcoin market is confluence. If we're seeing multiple data points from different perspectives, from a macroeconomic, technical, derivative, on-chain, macroeconomic, did I say that? Everything, once they're all pointing towards one same outcome, the probability of that happening is massively enhanced. But just to keep things simple and outline this thesis, I'm just going to be using the short term holder MVRV. So what we can do is if we go over to trading view, what we can see here in trading view is I've actually recreated the dollar cost averaging tool we have on site. So we can maybe have a little bit more flexibility and test out the best ways to actually average into the market. Now what we can see is just the exact same as before, starting five years ago with $10 invested per day. It have turned that $18,000 into, well, here it's $64,000. I'm actually filming this a few days before you'll see it because right now I'm in Vegas at the Bitcoin conference, probably doing a speech right now. So what we can see is even though this matches nearly right we can actually implement something like the short term holder mvrv try and once again more strategically accumulate now we can't actually get the short term holder realized price chart on trading view so the short term holder realized price is just the average accumulation or cost basis for new market participants or those that have been holding bitcoin for 155 days or less and the mvrv is just dividing the price or market cap by that realized price or market cap of the short term holders. Now, what we can do is just create this rolling volume weighted average price. Again, over a 155 day period, we can see it actually lines up very nicely, only with a few percent discrepancies between the actual short term holder realized price and what is displaying here. So again, not a perfect data point, but for what we're trying to do here is close enough. Now, what we can see here is if I just change this to add on this, this blue metric here is probably difficult to see, but this is outlining the MVRV of this score. So what I can do is just move it to a new pane below. And then if I turn these off, there we go. There's the short term holder MVRV or oh, close enough. So if it's always hovering around one, it'll equal one when the price is exactly at that short term holder realize price. It's significantly above when Bitcoin's price is significantly above indicating new market participants are at profit and significantly beneath when they're at a significant loss. So what I'll do is just hide that. And what we can do is using this data point here is if I just add on the MVRV DCA and say we only want to dollar cost average into the market when the MVRV, the short term older MVRV is beneath one. 
what I can do is just turn that on and for the previous five years we can see it actually doesn't make a substantial difference just to outline exactly what we're doing here as well is if we just look at this blue line here every time this is increasing substantially so for example all the way up here at the cycle peak this gives a value of around 390 which indicated 390 days in a row where we didn't dollar cost average into bitcoin because it was not a favorable risk to a reward on the first day that this dips beneath a value of one on the MVRV, we invest all of the capital we'd saved up during this time. So we can see by investing using this method, it actually didn't result in a substantial increase or improvement over just normal dollar cost averaging into the market. However, this is just one implementation. What we can actually do is change this MVRV level to 1.1. And what we can see is it increases the profit level from about $64,000 to $81,000. And keep in mind, you're actually dollar cost averaging your total invested amount has actually decreased because over the past few days or weeks as i'm filming this we've actually surpassed the realized price so it's significantly beneath you to say a few hundred dollars and made tens of thousands of dollars more now what we can do is just play around with this rather than a value of 1.1 if we change it to say 1.2 it goes from eighty one thousand dollars to seventy seven thousand dollars as i said there's a lot of data analysis that you'll need to do that aligns with how you want to invest in bitcoin how frequently you're able to because ten dollars a day might not work for you maybe you're investing a hundred dollars a month or whatever it is that works for you it's worth tweaking around but what we can do is rather than just focusing over the past five years which is a pretty limited sample and especially given the fact that in the first year or so we were barely beneath the short-term hold of realized price so didn't have much opportunity to accumulate if we knock this back to say 2015 to show 10 years of data what i'll do is again turn this down to one and for a baseline comparison we can see that in doing so you'd have invested around thirty six thousand four hundred and fifty dollars over this time and your total cash stack now would be about 1.93 million dollars so not bad at all if we turn on the MVRV DCA, what we can see is this actually increases to about $2.3 million of invested capital that you now have. And if we turn up to 1.1, it goes from 2.3 to 2.4 million. If we change it from 1.1 to 1.2, it goes just negligibly higher to 2.43 million. But what we can see is compared to the baseline there of dollar cost averaging when the MVRV is beneath the value of 1.2 compared to not, over the past 10 years, that's about half a million dollars difference from just $10 a day investing. Now, if I just bring this chart back up here, what we can see is a value of about 1.2 is somewhere around here. So if I just draw on there, so we can see that there's not many periods where the Bitcoin price action is actually surpassing this point. So you'll still be very frequently dollar cost averaging into the market. You'll just be trying to eliminate those purchases where Bitcoin is very much overextended to the upside. And it allows you to reinvest with substantially more capital once we start getting to more favorable risk to reward conditions. Now, if I just go back to trading view here, what we can actually do is comparing rather than the past, say, 10 years if we take this all the way back pretty much as far back as we can go with reliable bitcoin data all the way back to 2012 and just zoom out you can see that you'd have made a fairly substantial amount of profit if you start dollar cost averaging into bitcoin all the way back here when the price was just around five dollars you'd now have if we scroll all the way back across about 63 million dollars so not a bad investment considering you only put in $48,860 into the market. But what we can see is if we turn on the short term holder MVRV dollar cost average once again at the same value of 1.2, it changes the $63 million into about $78.3 million. So we're talking millions and millions of dollars difference for just missing out on a number of days a year for strategically dollar cost averaging. Again, if I add this back on, what we can see is some of the longest periods you'd have gone without DCAing in were here in 2020, 2021, which was about 200 days, back here in 2019, where it was just over 100 days. So you're still dollar cost averaging in most of the time. The highest by far was back here in 2011, when you wouldn't have done dollar cost average for about 291 days, nearly a year. So again, this is just one very simple example of how you can implement something like this to strategically dollar cost average into the market, to save up your purchases when Bitcoin is potentially extremely overvalued and accumulate considerably more aggressively when the market is in a much favorable discounted risk to reward region.
So just to summarize, dollar cost averaging into Bitcoin is a very good way to accumulate Bitcoin with very little stress. And honestly, for a lot of people, it still might be the best way to do things. If you don't want to have to check the chart every day, I mean, this was with daily dollar cost averaging, but the same was true if you did weekly or monthly. If you don't want to check the charts every single day, if you don't want to have to rely on data like this, if it suits you to buy every single day or every single week or any single purchasing period, you do exactly what works for you. However, what we can see is when we strategically dollar cost average into our positions in more favorable risk to reward prices, we do outperform just standard dollar cost averaging into the market. In this example, we used the short-term holder MVRV, which by ensuring we weren't accumulating during periods in which Bitcoin may have been incredibly overextended to the upside, it prevented us from buying Bitcoin at less than favorable risk reward prices, usually as we were approaching local peaks, and allows us to save that fiat to accumulate more aggressively when the price was at a discount, while still maintaining a very low stress and flexible, really easy way of constantly accumulating Bitcoin. However, this was just one very simple example. It may not work best for you. It may not align with exactly how you want to accumulate Bitcoin. So do your own research, look at the numbers, look at the data, trust that and implement it without getting sidetracked, without listening to things you see on social media, without getting overwhelmed by emotions and whatever your gut might be telling you. Trust the data, implement it, keep it simple outperform. If you liked this video, then please visit BitcoinMagazinePro.com where our analytics help you to cut through the noise to make informed data-driven decisions about Bitcoin. With over 150 live charts, personalized indicator lights, in-depth crypto entry reports, API access, and more for a fraction of the standard industry price. And let me know what your thoughts are on strategically dollar cost averaging using something like this. Do you use different metrics? Do you have different means of actually accumulating Bitcoin? Let me know in the comments below and on social media. I look forward to reading and replying to them. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.